that they acquired um, right after Ritz Carlton. Anybody here of Renaissance Hotels? What's the full name of Renaissance Hotels? Renaissance. Hope I spelled it right. By Marriott. Does anybody know what their economy line that they bought is? Residence in, Residence in by Marriott. By Marriott. Anybody know? Um, I'm trying to think what they're. I can't remember. But you understand it. And now, <laughs> they, they've really screwed me up now. This used to be easy to do. Now they just about Star Wars. <coughs> if I did, I'd, I'd be filling this board out all the way over to here with all the Starwood brands. You know, Weston. Um, so what did they do to JW Marriott? They kind of left it. And it's, and according to Marriott, it's, it's, uh, it's called an upper full service, so it kind of is in limbo in between the two. Okay. Yes, sir. Who's Marriott's biggest competitor? Hilton. That's an excellent question. If you wanted to go the Hilton route, <coughs> what's the full service for Hilton? Hi. Nope. Hilton. Hilton hotels, just like Marriott. What's their economy? Homewood. Excellent. Homewood Suites. <coughs> What's their budget? <coughs> Hampton. Hampton. Oh yeah. What's Homewood's full name, by the way? Homewood by Hilton. Interesting here. What's the full name of Hampton Inns? Just Hampton. Just Hampton Inns. Why? You're partially right. Hampton Inns is such a strong brand. Okay. And and Hilton did not create Hampton Inns, by the way. They acquired it from Holiday Inns. But Hampton Inns is a who who stays at Hampton Inns? Who's very happy with Hampton Inns? They're so strong, they don't need the name Hilton by them. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so we went down. What's Hilton's luxury brand? Yes, ma'am. Uh, How did you know that? You work for Hilton? No, I didn't. You just know that. You read the book. I don't know. You're 50% correct. Hilton <laughs> Suites? No? Embassy is actually a full service, like kind of like Renaissance is to Mira. Um, you, you are correct, the Waldorf Astoria. Now, here's an interesting Waldorf. Hilton's doing something really interesting. They have another. Um, they have another brand out there. Congress. Who said that? How did you know that? Ah, you guys, okay, that's fine. You can use your computer. You are correct. Anybody traveled in Europe? <coughs> right, is, have you, anybody stayed at a Conrad Hotel? I think. Okay, they're really nice, but they were exclusive to Europe. And so because they already have an existing brand, Hilton did something really interesting, and I was actually working for them when they did this. They said, we need to create a luxury brand, and they kind of looked at Marriott, and they said, <coughs> Let's learn from their mistake. And they actually went one better. They created two luxury brands. This is so funny. This is how this is rich people do it, right? You can create two luxury brands. Okay. They created Waldorf. Actually, what they did was they bought the Waldorf Astoria in New York. They own it. And since they own it, they own the name. And they said, for the longest time, there was only one Waldorf Astoria. And they said, well, everybody knows the Waldorf, right? And in case you didn't know it, for the longest time there was only one Ritz Carlton. So what they said, well that's a famous brand name that's associated with luxury. Let's build a whole chain of hotels around it. But in case that doesn't work, let's also build one called Conrad Hotels to be our luxury brand. And here's what they're doing. This is the honest to God's truth. They're throwing both of them out there to see which one sticks to the wall. And whatever one 
clearly the consumers prefer, what are they going to do? They're going to take, let's say Waldorf is it, I think that's what it's going to be. They're going to take all the comrades and turn them into Waldorfs. <laughs> So that's an interesting way of expanding. Yes, ma'am. What would like embassy suites and DoubleTree be classified as? Embassy suites and DoubleTree would both be full service, and you asked the right guy because I actually was working for them when they were acquired. Embassy suites and DoubleTree used to be a company called Promise, but they were created <coughs> under someone else. Anybody know? Holiday Inn created the. Holiday Inn is actually pretty funny. They create all these wonderful concepts, and then they turn around and sell them. They created Hampton Inns, they created Embassy Suites, they created um, uh, Residence Inns, okay? And so <laughs> they create these great brands, and then they turn around and sell them. I don't know what the deal is with that, but um, does anybody know Holiday Inns got a luxury brand? In it's hot now. Yeah, you're on fire, man. You know your stuff. You work for hotels? Oh, okay, I see. That's me. There you go. Good. So you understand now about vertical, vertical and horizontal integration? So much that if it was a test question, you would know the difference. Vertical is when you try to cover all the markets. What's horizontal? All in one category. Yep, but what's the easiest way to remember? Can't beat them by Can't beat them by them. Can't beat them by them. Make sense? All right. <coughs> Man, okay, you guys got to get better this weekend, okay? I'm tired of the, the, the sick crew here. If I get sick, I'm taking it all off. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, so that's vertical and horizontal integration. Okay. <coughs> Here's some uh, little weird categories that don't quite fit in anywhere else. The first one is bed and <coughs> breakfast inns. Right? Bed and breakfast are this unique category unto itself. Basically, it's a home away <coughs> from home. And it's an accommodation whose owners live on premises. Now, for the longest time, bed and breakfast were hot, and then they cooled down, and they're back. Uh, they're really back. According, based on who? What's what's the big thing now? Airbnb. Airbnb, excellent. You know where the uh, you know the story of Airbnb? Who knows the story of Airbnb? What's what does the uh, air stand for in Airbnb? Airplane. Yeah, good guess. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you the story real quick. This guy's brilliant, and he deserves to be a billionaire. Um, San Jose, there was a big conference coming into town. And he's a computer guy. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to, um, you know, people can't get rooms and they're, they're staying like miles away. I'm just going to rent out my extra room. But in order to do that, I need to put up a website that can get to people. And that's where the brilliance of Airbnb is. But here's what he did. He didn't have a bed in the extra room, but he went out and he bought an air mattress. Thus, that's where he came up with the term Airbnb. And that wasn't too long ago, and now Airbnb is a legitimate threat to the lodging industry. It really is. My graduate student, Jeff, who you guys were, hey, the surveys, right? Remember? Um, he, that's his area of study. It's called the shared economy. And um, I tell you what, if I were a hotel owner right now, I'd be thinking, i got to worry about these guys. Because uh, Airbnb is more than just the lodging product. Yes, sir. What about like VRBO? VRO, VRBO you are, is so great that you asked that question. They have been around for years, and they really were the original Airbnb. But what's the problem with VR, VRBO? It's more like a long-term vacation rental that people have been doing for like a really long time. Yeah, that's part of it. They're horrible at marketing themselves. <laughs> I mean, they were Airbnb before Airbnb. Why couldn't they capitalize on it? And it really comes <coughs> down to, I tell you, the people who do the marketing and the web presence for Airbnb, they earn their money. I mean, Vacation Real by Owner has been around since the 70s. And it's almost kind of like the taxi cabs and Uber. 
I mean, taxi cabs have been around forever. They could have done that. But the people, you know, it really comes down to how well you market yourself. <laughs> but B&Bs, like I say, even before Airbnb was around, uh, they were, they, um, they were around. <coughs> but again, they did a really poor job of marketing themselves. And it was kind of this niche market. I mean, who goes to bread and breakfast inns, basically? Romantic couples, right? That's, you know, that's what bed and breakfast kind of catered to. If you had kids, they were not welcome. And if you wanted to watch TV, they, you're going to be a, you're gonna be out of luck. Okay? Airbnb is very different, though. And, I, uh, again, I, whoever's doing their marketing, I love them. What's, what's their tagline? And this is really what it comes down to, the difference between them and a hotel. What's their advertising campaign? What's their tagline in their advertising campaign? Anybody know? Uh, no, it's something like live like as a people or something. 